Hello, it's Mark again. Long time, haven't been done a video in a while. Uh, we had the holidays with Easter, and then I was out of town, and then I think one of the Sundays I was sick, so decided to do one today. And I guess because I've been gone for a little while, I'm, today I'm going to do something that I've actually had a request from. A couple people have asked me about this particular uh, scotch, so um, today we're going to do the. Glenmorangie Alta, which it's this is from the private edition. This is going to be a limited. This is a limited run, and uh, I don't generally do. I try to do scotches that are easily attainable, that are inexpensive. This is a little bit more expensive, and it's a limited run. But you know, I, like I said, I had a couple people ask me about it, so I decided that I'd go ahead and go ahead and do this one today. Um, so. I'll go ahead and give you a little bit of what they say about this. Now, this is created with uh, their own wild yeasts. They are made at the distillery. I'm really very skeptical about this. I don't really, my experience with wild yeasts mostly have been, of course, with the, with the Belgian beer, and I'm not a big fan of that, so I'm not sure what um, to expect with this, um, but I'm very skeptical because I don't know that it's going to be to my taste. So I'll give you kind of tell you what it says on the on the on the um, on the box here, and then um, uh, some other things that I know about it. So okay, so where we want to start with this? Uh, this is a pale golden single malt whiskey. has a, It has a rounded nose of biscuit tones, light floral notes, and baking and baking bread alongside hints of vanilla, raisins, and mandarin orange. Crisp citrus textures lead to tastes of buttery candy, more creamy vanilla, and orange syrup. With yeast in the background, gentle mint, and a su suggestion of sweet chili before a long, earthy finish. Shedding light on the aspect of a distill of distilling for so long overlooked. Glenmorangie Alta is a beacon of future Scotch whiskey. Um, so, I'm mean, a little bit more intrigued by the prospects of um, uh, yeah, Michael Jackson, who the, the deceased um, whiskey drinker, uh, kind of played a part in this because um, he kind of had said that there was, he thought that um, Glenmorangie had its own yeast that was that that wasn't from the distiller's yeast, and all the all the distilleries are using distiller's yeast. So um, they're kind of very, very similar along those lines from what I've read. I'm not an expert on that. Um, so yes, this creamy aromatic single malt whiskey was inspired by chance conversation more than 20 years ago between Dr. Bill Lumsden, the director of the stilling and whiskey creation and the late great whiskey writer, Michael Jackson. Over the generations, yeast vital, yeast's vital contribution to whiskey's taste has been all but forgotten. Dr. Bill, a yeast physi physiologist by training, was one of the very few still keenly aware of its potential. And that day, as J Jackson recounted a little-known story about a unique strain Glenmorangie was once said to have possessed, an exciting idea began to form in his mind. Intrigued by the prospects Jackson's story raised, Dr. Bill walked the barley fields near the distillery, aware that the yeast often clung to husks of grain. Collecting a few precious ears, he took them to the laboratory. There he discovered a new strain of yeast. And so that's kind of what this is. This is off of there. This comes from the cardball yeast. Barley comes off the card bowl. Barley, Ugh. card, card ball barley, and um, which is also the barley that's really famous for the signet, uh, which is one of their probably their their top of the line of their of their regular offerings, um, and also there's a um, travel exclusive from the card ball. Barley also called the Cadball. So, okay, let's open this one up. 
All right, nothing else on there. Okay, oh yeah, the high, I was gonna mention the ABV is very high, this is 51.2. Um, and you don't see that a lot from Glenmore. I don't think they currently have a cast strength. Yeah, there's no cast strength uh, Glenmore and G out there. Uh, so this is a little gonna be a little bit different for them. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? Oh, this is from, um, Second fill casks, and it's of course wild yeasts. Um, they did fewer, fewer bottlings on this than they did their other private editions. So, um, if you like it, better grab a couple bottles because it's going to be harder to find than than the others. Um, they did not use the distiller's yeast. Uh, the the yeast was actually from. Uh, came from a, a wash, a beer wash that they brewed, and um, you know this is what they created from that. Um, what else? Second fill bourbon barrels was also what they used on this. So, all right, let's uh, open her up here. Hmm, this does not smell like the tin at all. All right. So let's give it my little spin. Definitely smell the alcohol um, because of the, the high ABV. Getting a lot of floral. Bread definitely can can get the bread um, in there. A lot of malt, very malty. Again, the high ABV. It's hard to sift sip through that right right off the bat here. I need to be a little bit more purposeful here in the nosing. Definitely the bread, maybe a small hint of vanilla. I'm not getting a whole bunch of vanilla. We'll go with that. Vanilla, a little slight, um, definitely some bread, uh, floral, def very, very floral. I know it says it's supposed to be light floral, but uh, to me that seems more than light. A little bit of fruit, orange. Okay. Let's give it a let's give it a taste here. Getting some mint, um, pepper, peppermint. Yeah, um, butter, some butter. Um, hmm. What else? Little bit of vanilla, yeah. The vanilla starts to come through at the end. Um, 
it's not, it kind of definitely has that bready vanilla. Um, the floral does not seem to be there as much on the taste, uh, at least not on the on the aftertaste. Um, yeah, mint. Um, I have to say that you know I didn't have high hopes for it, but um, I do actually like this. I think um, I would recommend it. I was like I said, I was really skeptical um, just because I don't like Belgian wild yeast beer, so. I think I will definitely invest in a couple more of these, um, and I recommend it. You might want to give it a try, and I will see you all next time.